I really wanted to teach on discernment. Okay, with everything that's happening right now in the body of Christ, you must understand that it is imperative to have discernment. Okay, it is imperative to have discernment in these last days. And if you do not have if you do not have discernment, you will end up being deceived, okay? You will end up being confused. You will end up feeling like, you know, you, you know, lost or oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. This is why you need discernment. Now, not every Christian, okay? Not every Christian has discernment, but every Christian should have discernment. Do you hear me? Not every Christian has discernment, but every Christian should have discernment. Okay. Now we have seen recently a lot of exposure taking place, especially towards the end of 2023. And it's going crazy in January. We're seeing a lot of things happening with TD Jakes. I've heard of people filing things with the police. We're, we're hearing a lot of things happening with what has really happened behind the scenes of TB Joshua. We're seeing a lot of things take place. And the Lord gave me a word that 2024 will be the year of exposure, the year of the fear of the Lord. And you will continue to see many people begin to be exposed. Now, you're, you're probably wondering, man of God, what can we do to prevent ourselves from receiving demons or prevent ourselves from being, you know, in a place where we're deceived or receiving demons or under a false prophet? The only thing you can do is seek out for discernment. You need to put your feelings aside, put your feelings away and begin to cry for discernment, okay? Because it's not about people's good works. It's not about people's humility. It's not about people, the miracles they do and whatnot. It has nothing to do with that, okay? So tonight, I'm going to be teaching you about discernment. Someone type in the comments and say, discernment. All right? Type in the comments and say, discernment. All right, discernment, discernment. We're going to talk about discernment. Uh, give me one moment. All right. Perfect. Um, so now what we must understand is that the meaning of discernment is the ability to judge well and to distinguish between what is good and evil or what is right or wrong. Okay, that, that is what discernment is. It is the ability to judge well and to distinguish between what is good and what is evil or what is wrong or what is right. Now, if you do, if you do not have discernment, you will not know what is biblical truth and what isn't biblical truth. You will not know who is a prophet and who's a false prophet. You will not know anything because you do not have the capacity. You do not have the mental, intellectual, or the spiritual capacity to understand what is before you. Now, with discernment, discernment gives you the ability to see through the miracle. It gives you the ability to see through the good works. It gives you the ability to see through the, the smile. It gives you the capacity to see past all the good things that are done in the name of Jesus. That is what discernment is. Now, the Bible says in the, in the, in the book of first Kings chapter three, verse nine, it says, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart 
to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? So Solomon was asking the Lord for an ability to be able to judge the people. And he knew he could not judge them unless he had discernment. Because Solomon did not have discernment. So he went to God and he said, God, I cannot judge these people. I can't do it because I cannot discern what is right and wrong. I cannot discern between good and evil. I cannot discern when a liar comes in front of me. I cannot discern when a false prophet comes in front of me. So the Lord gave him wisdom. Okay, the Lord gave him wisdom and he said, uh, Solomon's prayer was, therefore, it's in, it's in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. So Solomon was a prophet, but he was also a judge. He was judging the people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? So we are all called to judge. Why? Because we're, we're distinguishing between what is of God and what isn't of God. What is right or wrong? Okay. Now, if you are a mother or a father, you're going to judge your children. You're going to begin to discern and be like, mm, this is off. They're out late. Mm, something is off with them. They're hanging out with this friend. The something's off. I'm discerning. Okay, so in context of scripture, discernment is an ability given by God to know what spirit is in operation in a place or in a person or what are the hidden motives of that individual. Do you understand me? In context of scripture, discernment is an ability given by God to know what spirit is in operation in a place or in a person. Or what are the hidden motives of an individual? Do you understand me? Now you can discern people by their works but sometimes false prophets or evil people will have good works freemasons have the best works freemasons have the best public works most than some pastors because publicly they own the hospitals and they do all this charitable work and this is why you need to have discernment to see beyond what is public see beyond what is present the sermon is not just what we see by the fruits because there's some people that will portray a false humility they will do things so you will be deceived so it is it is the ability to discern what spirit is an operation in a place or in a person okay or what are the hidden motives of an individual so you go to somebody's house, your auntie's house, okay? And she gives you a plate of food to, food to eat, all right? Discernment, will, uh, discernment should kick in if your auntie's a witch. Discernment kicks in and says, mm, do not eat this food because this right here is not of God. This right here has a witchcraft within it. Do not eat it. The intentions and motives of your auntie are not good. You will have some type of conviction, some type of knower, something inside of you says, do not eat it. And you don't eat it. And you don't eat it. You see, discernment makes one wise and understanding. Okay and removes the veil of ignorance off our eyes. You see, not everyone has discernment. The majority of people within the church base someone authentic by miracles, signs, and wonders and accuracy. And the moment that you voice your reservations or you, or you, or you voice your opinion or you voice, mm, I don't agree with this, 
there will be a mob of people that will attack you. They will attack you because there was a form of idolatry because the people are basing it upon accuracy. So they do not allow you to say anything about their prophetess, anything about their prophet. They don't want you to discern for yourself. And when you discern something, they come against you and they call you jealous. Every time you discern, they call you jealous. Every time you discern, they call you a hater. That's the problem in the body of Christ, that nobody wants to investigate and dis discern from themselves. Discernment makes one wise and understanding and removes the veil of ignorance off our eyes. Because without discernment, a Muslim will come to you and he will talk about the Bible and you will think he's a Christian. Without discernment, Muhammad, the false prophet in Islam, will come to you, talk about God, and you'll, and you'll think he's, he, he's a Christian. There was a veil that is upon many Christians where they cannot perceive the truth, where they cannot see that this is of God or this is of the devil because there is a lack of discernment. Where there is a lack of discernment, there is an overflow of ignorance. There is an overflow of deception. There is a veil that must come off your eyes. If we do not have discernment, we will be blinded by the enemy and never believe the truth because it is spiritually discerned. Number, we're seeing the things with TB Joshua come out and many people are shocked and like, oh my gosh, but I have been exposing TB Joshua for many, many years because I spiritually discerned these things. I went into prayer when my parents wanted to go to Nigeria for prayer and whatnot and i prayed and the lord showed me who tb joshua was and i begin to research and see the things that he has was doing that were unbiblical that were demonic taking things out of context he had a false humility and now we see things being exposed on bbc news now the reason a lot of people could not see past tb joshua was because Things had to be spiritually discerned because what he did was in secret. What he did was in secret. So this is why you need spiritual discernment because it sees past the natural. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so the things of God are spiritually discerned and the natural man will think miracle signs and wonders and the resurrection of Christ is foolishness because it's spiritually discerned and it's the same way in the kingdom of darkness you will not be able to see what is evil because what is evil is spiritually discerned. It's not that everything is evil by what you see, but some things are evil by revelation of the Holy Ghost. And this is why some people call this person a man of God and then the other person will say they're a false prophet somebody is lacking in the area of discernment they're either real or false do you understand me the Bible says but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God so number one, if you are living in fornication, you are a natural man. You are a carnal man because the, the, the flesh is overtaking the spirit. The Bible says the spirit is at flesh with the with, with the is, is at war with the flesh, and the flesh is at war with the spirit. So when you're living in sin, you are a carnal man. So you will not be able to receive 
the things of the spirit of God and they will be foolishness to you when you are living in sexual immorality or if, if you are struggling with idolatry you will not be able to discern or receive the things of the spirit of God you will not have the ability to distinguish between a prophet and a false prophet you will think that it's just about division in the church and how the devil is dividing the church and because you don't study the word you don't even know that Jesus said I did not come to bring peace upon the earth, but I came to bring a sword. There is a great deception happening in the body of Christ. There is a pyramid scheme. There is people within government, people within Hollywood, and people within the church that are Freemasons, that they are the elites and the untouchables. And whenever someone tries to speak out against them, nobody will believe. The voice of the lowly, the oppressed, and the victims are completely put down in the dirt. They only listen to those who have influence power. And this is why pedophilia is running in the church. This is why murder is going in the church. This is why adultery is happening in the church successfully because nobody listens to victims. Nobody listens to victims. Until you are the victim, maybe you will scream, oh, I got raped, I got abused by this person and that person. People are not gonna believe you. So, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, so you, you're trying to understand why this person is a false prophet. Number one, you don't know your word. And number two, it's spiritually discerned. You see, discernment gives us the capacity to sense that something is off, okay? Discernment gives us the capacity to sense that something is off. You may not know what it is, okay? You may not know what it is specifically, but there is an inward voice that tells you that this is not biblical or this is not of God. There's something inside of you that says, this is witchcraft. I don't understand what they're doing, but this is witchcraft. This doesn't sit right in my spirit. There is a nowhere inside of you that you just know that you know that you know that this thing is not of God. Okay? See, the more you spend time in God's presence and his word, you'll be able to know the difference between your own thoughts and feelings versus the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives to you. The more time you spend in God's presence and in his word, you will be able to know the difference between your own thoughts and feelings versus the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives to you. If you are not in God's presence or in his word, you have zero discernment. You have zero sensitivity to the voice of God and the presence of God. And this is why you keep going to false prophets. And this is why you keep giving a thousand dollar seats for miracles. And this is why you keep defending false prophets because you can't spiritually discern anything because that comes by way of the presence of God and his word. It's impossible. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He didn't speak to you. Stop lying. He didn't speak to you. He didn't speak to you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their power of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So discernment comes by repetition. It comes from by practice. Let me read it again. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, but solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So discernment is an ability. It is a spiritual ability that God gives to man that needs to be trained. 
that needs to be put into practice. You don't just have the sermon and wake up one morning and you can discern everything. The power of the sermon that God has given unto you must be must be kindled, must be the the, fl the flame must be waved with with a, with a with a with a fan. The sermon inside of you, and you got to go like this. You got to train it. You got to keep going. It's like you, you you got the tools and the material to build a fire in the wilderness. But if you don't bring those those two sticks together and and, and you do that friction and you rub them together, you're gonna get no fire. And if you don't stay in the presence of God or read the Word of God, you're not gonna have any type of discernment. Discernment isn't something we all have. It is something sought after and trained through practice. Now, there are a lot of false prophecies on TikTok. People lying on TikTok and said they heard God this, that this year is going to be 24 this. 2024 is the year of the exposure. 2024 is the year of the fear of the Lord where people will drop dead if they continue to rebel against God and touch the anointed of God. When I say the anointed of God, I'm talking about Christians. Those who are into witchcraft, they will experience the judgment and the fear of God to visit their household. This year is not a year to play around, lest your works be exposed. If you do not spend time in prayer, in fasting or in the word you will not be able to discern anything impossible discernment comes by way of holy ghost it comes by way of holy spirit and when we do nothing to edify our spirit we are limiting our ability to receive information or alerts from the holy spirit do you understand me? Discernment comes by way of Holy Ghost. But if you do nothing to edify your spirit, you don't study the word, you don't pray, you don't fast, you are limiting your ability to receive information or alerts from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the flesh is at war with the spirit and the spirit is at war with the flesh. When you do not edify your spirit with the word, with prayer and fasting, your flesh will begin to put a veil on your eyes, a veil on your ears, so you cannot perceive, so you cannot hear, a veil on your mind, so you cannot understand, so you cannot grasp the truth. You cannot do it. Oh my God. You see, in order to increase your discernment, you have to practice testing people and their doctrine. The only way you can grow in discernment is when you try to start discerning. Where you sit down and say, mm, let me pray about this. No, no. L let me pray about coming out to Jamaica with you. How many people go on field trips or they go on vacations with their demonic friends and they end up dying there because their friends killed them? Oh, I'm going to pray about that. Oh, you want to lay hands on me and give me a word? Oh, let me, let me pray about that. Now, when you begin to pray, and you go to fasting, God will speak. Because the Bible says that God may speak in one way, yet in another, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, yet man does not perceive it, yet man does not recognize it. There was a time that there was a pastor, so-called apostle, that wanted me to take over his church. And I went there, about six people in the church, all women, you know, and they wanted me to come back. They wanted me to take over the whole church, just be the pastor there. And, you know, I went to first service and I was supposed to come back to second service. I went to prayer and I said, Lord, show me who this man is. Show me who this man is. And the man was giving me prophecies. He was saying all these things that this is your next moment, that this is your this. This is what God is calling you to all these things. And me and my wife went. But when I went to sleep and I prayed, 
I saw the man's the man's face like a wolf. And my wife heard me speaking out in my dream. I was speaking out in my dream, like sleep talking. And I was seeing this man as a wolf in my dreams, a wolf. And then I canceled from there and I said, I will not go there. Because what it, when it's not the will of God, it will delay your destiny. It will abort your calling. It will, it will delay you. It will, it will abort it. Do you understand me? So I said, Ab, I said no, and I cut him off. And the funny thing is, is that I had to bring someone through deliverance in my family that was going to that church, that minister, and someone in my family received false tongues from those people. False tongues. And we had to bring them through deliverance. Now, I would have never known that a certain person in my family needed this deliverance if I didn't pray for discernment. This is why you pray for discernment personally and you don't just go ask around. Asking around is another way to get, gain some form of information or wisdom. But if you don't personally pray and seek the face of God, you will never find discernment impossible. You must train the discernment that is in your spirit because the, 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 the discernment you have is the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the revealer of all things even the deeper things of God so if you are not edifying your, your spirit with the word and prayer and fasting you're not giving the Holy Spirit a chance to reveal things unto you You have to begin to start practicing. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So the Bible says, test the spirits. And I'm going to say something right now that may keep people mad. When I started testing Celestial, or when I started having certain reservations and certain this, people attacked me. People say, oh my God, you're jealous, or oh my God, you're this. But the Bible says, test every spirit. The Bible says, test every spirit. So you should test me too. But certain people have idols that when you say something about Celestial, it's game over. If you say something about Lovi or TV Joshua, it's game over. But the Bible says, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. The Bible doesn't just tell us that we will know a prophet to know a prophet. The Bible tells us to test because sometimes we will not know because we will miss it. And the Bible says we prophesy in part and we know in part we are not God. We must test it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test Celestial, no matter how many prophecies she gives and things come to pass, I'm going to test her. I'm going to test all of them. I test everyone. I don't pick favorites for no one because guess what? I used to be filled with demons and demonic impartation. I used to not test and I got my wife filled with demons. I got people I know filled with demons because I didn't test and the man was super accurate. So if people always want to attack you because you want to sit down a little bit and discern for yourself and pray for yourself they got an idolatry problem and this is why the church is being seduced by false prophets left right and, and center you sh you have the free will to discern and question whoever you want it doesn't matter if they are authentic or not it doesn't matter if they're a general or not it does not matter tear down the walls of idolatry it's disgusting it is disgusting it is gross everyone's jealous that speaks out it is disgusting There is, there is a mob. There is a, there is an idolatry system. It is absolutely satanic. You understand me? The Bible says in first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 21, but test everything, hold fast. What is good? 
You understand me? But test everything. Hold fast what is good. Now I now I made a video about Marcus Rogers about how Celestial said that he is a Freemason. I talked to Marcus on the phone today. Freemasonry is demonic. The Illuminati is demonic. All those symbolism, everything is a is satanic. It is absolutely demonic. I've been exposing it for a very long time. But as I've talked to Marcus and I've seen his content throughout the years, I have not discerned anything of Freemasonry or the Illuminati. But when Celestio will, will, will say that he's a Freemason, everyone believes it. When the Bible tells us that these things are spiritually discerned. So if you cannot spiritually discern for yourself that someone is a Freemason or, an Illum or in the Illuminati, you will be led by man and not by the spirit. The Bible says that we are led by the spirit, not prophecy. We are not led by prophecy. We are not led by a prophet. We are not led by a man. You are not led by me. I'm only teaching what is in the word of God. And what you have to do is pray and seek God about it and discern for yourself. Do you understand me? There is a prophecy, uh, 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 idolatry, deliverance, idolatry, influence, idolatry. The next big thing, idolatry. I never promote myself. I don't post things about uh, me. I don't post deliverance reels or prophecy i don't do those i just teach the word and i and i react to false teaching now i want to teach you three ways to test the spirits three ways to test the spirit all right three ways to test the spirit Okay, three ways to test the spirits, okay? Okay, number one is the word of God. I want everyone to type in the comments and say the word of God. Okay, type in the comments and say the word of God. Okay, the number one way to test the spirits is the word of God. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our inner, innermost thoughts and desires. Okay. So the word of God has the capacity to expose. The Bible says it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So when you read the word of God, it will begin to expose you. The word of God will expose you. It'll expose your innermost thoughts. It will expose your desires. The word of God will literally expose you. Now, when, if you have a strong foundation in the word in context, what you know and understand about the word will judge and discern for you because you know the truth. Okay. If you have a strong foundation in the word in context, what you know and understand of the word will judge and discern for you because you know the truth okay see the word of god will expose a person and their false teaching but this can never happen if you do not have a foundation of it so when you know the word of god and you have a foundation of the word and someone teaches that jesus the bible doesn't say that jesus died on the cross you know see if you didn't know the word You'll be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I always thought Jesus died on the cross. You know, I, I, I never read that verse before. I just I just always went to Sunday school and they said it. I, I should have studied my Bible. I didn't know he never died on the cross. But when you know the word of God and you have studied the word, you will hear the false prophet say that. And then you will say, ah, 
that's not true because I know the Bible talks about that he died on the cross for our sins and he resurrected. I know that this is what the Bible says, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I know what the Bible says, that he died on the cross. So the number one way to truly discern if someone is false or someone is of God is by you knowing the word in context. In context. You see, the word has an assignment to expose the works of the evil one. And that is why it is important to meditate on it. Apostle Paul said, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. So Apostle Paul was, 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 uh, uh, he was, uh, promo he was promoting the, he was promoting the idea that we need, he was, a, he was promoting the truth that we need to be discerning of the devil's devices we need to be discerning of false prophets we must be discerning of people we must be discerning of teaching because he said do not be ignorant of the devil's devices the devil's schemes now how does the devil operate in the church with what devices does he use he will use a perverted gospel he will use people he will use lying signs and wonders this is why we need discernment. Do you understand me? We need discernment. And, and I just hate when people say, you know, we shouldn't judge. Only God can judge. Look, look at this verse. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 13. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil person up from among you. The Bible says, purge the evil person from among you. But how can you purge the evil person that is among you if you do not have discernment and you're not judging? Judging is all about distinguishing between good and evil. I don't know why people say judging is a bad word. It literally means to distinguish between good and evil. Biblically speaking, the Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. The reason your morals keep getting corrupt, corrupted, the reason you keep dating horrible men and horrible, horrible women, you keep get, getting married to these narcissists because you don't judge them. You don't judge them by their works. You don't judge them by the, the, the repetition of their past. You don't judge them. You need to judge people. Because if you do not judge people, you will get in a place of being deceived. Oh my gosh, I married a narcissist. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I trusted this person because you didn't judge them. Only God can judge me is the most unbiblical statement by Christians, especially the ones that are followers of TB Joshua. Number two, another way to test the spirits, number two, is to seek God. Okay? Another way to test the spirits is to seek God. Another way to test the spirits and seek God. Listen, testing the spirits doesn't mean going on my YouTube channel and seeing what I said. No, 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 no. That doesn't that doesn't mean testing the spirits. It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that. Okay? So number 2 is seek God. Okay? So we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 15. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 15. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understand. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. 
for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth. From the Lord gives wisdom. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and equity every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. You hear me? And knowledge pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech who forsake the paths of of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways so the only way so the way to get wisdom and understanding see even if sometimes if someone preaches the word so good and you're like uh Man, I, don't, I can't tell if they're of God or not. Seek God at the end of the day. It doesn't stop at going to one service and or they're accurate about the blood of Jesus or they didn't say anything false this Sunday. Seek the face of God. The Bible says, my son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commands with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom. So first of all, you have to be slow to speak, slow to always trying to be right and listen, investigate, investigate, listen, making your ear attentive to wisdom, making your ear have the capacity to discern, to perceive your eyes to perceive, but you cannot do that if you make, if you made up your mind already. You can't. Discernment is for yourself. I don't want you guys just to listen to me. I don't promote me. I don't say listen to me. I say listen to the Holy Spirit, my God. Making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. So your ears have to want to listen. Your heart has to want to understand. See, some of you have a hardened heart. Which means that no matter what people say, no matter the victims, no matter the evidence, you won't listen, you won't believe. This is why there are many people insulting those victims that TB Joshua raped. Those people never lived with TB Joshua, those, those people that are insulting the woman. Those the, the, the people, the preachers that are defending TB Joshua, they were never in those hotels. They never lived with TB Joshua for 14, 15 years, but the woman did, but the woman did. And people want to say that they are lying, but they don't even know TB Joshua. They didn't live with him for 14, 15 years. And verse three, it says, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and, and search for it as for hidden treasures. So the Bible's saying the only way that you will truly get discernment is if you seek for it like silver, if you seek for it as a hidden treasure. You know how some of you run around and email every deliverance minister for deliverance and you're searching and seeking the same way, ask God for discernment. Because within your desperation of deliverance, because you don't have discernment, you fall into the hands of Lovie and Daniel Adams. You fall into the hands of a false prophet like Leon Dupree's and Ed Centrinelli. You fall into the hands of false prophets because you don't have discernment. And the Bible says, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The Bible says that then you will find the knowledge of God. For the, for the Lord gives wisdom. And we know that the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, gave him understanding. Solomon really received the knowledge of God because the Lord will reveal what he knows. So the Lord will reveal what he knows about that person, about this situation. 
So the Bible says he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Okay. Now, when we go to um, verse 12, it says delivering you from the way of evil. So the Bible is talking about how wisdom and understanding and discernment will deliver you from the way of evil. From men of perverted speech who forsake the path of right of, of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. So these men that the Bible is talking about, you will not be able to discern them because what they are doing is be in secret. So God is saying, delivering you from the, from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech who forsake the path of uprightness. So you won't be able to see them forsaking the path. You won't be able to see the perverted speech because it's private. Because it's secret. Now, when you get the knowledge of God, God will begin to unravel the secrets. This is not, it's, it, this is why the Bible says it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, thus saith the Lord. It is not by your own strength. It is not by ooh, how I understand the word. It is by, it's by the spirit of God. That's why the Bible says that the it, things are foolishness. The, the things of the spirit are foolishness to the natural man. Now, the third way is the, the third way is receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. Now, not everyone will have this gift of discerning of spirits, okay? There is a difference between having discernment by way of Holy Spirit than having the gift of discernment. It's different. Now there's some now with me, I can see someone preach and know they're false or real. I can hear someone's doctrine and know they're false how they preach a particular thing. I'm not talking about interpretation issues, but how they talk about certain things in the Old Testament, I already know they're false. When they begin to highlight rituals, I know they're false. When they begin to take things out of, I know they're false already. This is why you'll see me call out people like this and I've never been wrong. And if I'm ever wrong, I will humbly say I'm wrong. I apologize, I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to say I was wrong, but there are certain people that have the gift of discerning of spirits. Okay. The gift of discerning of spirits to distinguish between good and evil. But the church today is, Oh, ah, my gosh. TD Jakes was so motivational. My God, he encouraged me when I was in my lonely moments. There was no way that he did these things, but the gift of discernment will help you to understand that there are things that are private happening in the private that will shock you because outwardly you see man in its outward appearance and you see all these good things, but you don't see spiritual, um, the spiritual nonsense and things in private. Okay. So the Bible says in first Corinthians chapter, um, 12 verse 4 through 11 first corinthians chapter 12 um verse 4 through 11 okay first corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 through 11 and we're gonna read in the new king james version all right so there there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Okay. The Bible says there are differences of ministries. Some of y'all say there's no exposing ministry. There's differences of ministries. I'm not just an exposing ministry, but let's keep going. All right. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. Okay. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit 
to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Verse 11, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distri distributing to each one individually as he wills. So not everyone is going to receive the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of discerning of spirits. And some of you will have to work really, really hard to discern. You have to study your word. You have to pray and seek the face of God. Now, those who have the gift of discernment, it will be kind of easier. Those who have the gift of miracles, it will be easier to fill them to perform miracles. Those that have the gift of healing, they have a mantle for it. Right? So not everyone will have the capacity to operate in the same realm as another person on anointing because the Holy Spirit distributes to each one individually as he will. So you'll see someone operating in the greater realm of prophecy. This prophet operating in a greater realm of deliverance. This prophet operating in the gift of discerning of spirits or the gift of faith. God gives to each person individually. And you don't have to be a prophet or, or, or apostle or, or this, this, this to have that gift. Who cares about the title at the end of the day? Right? But it, it, it you don't got to be fivefold to have a gift from the Holy Ghost. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. All right. Now we're going to read it in the new living, the, the new living translation, new living translation. Okay. Same verse. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Verse seven, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To, the, to one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, see some of you are like, I don't have a gift, but maybe you have the gift of wise, wise advice. Maybe you have the gift of wisdom where you're giving so much wise advice and people are like, oh my gosh, like you're so, just so like good. Like you just say all the good stuff because you have a gift. You have a, you have a calling to encourage people. You have a calling to ignite people and to propel people and to give people wisdom to get out of darkness. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else, the, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. Verse 10, he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from a different spirit. But they told us not to judge. But they said we shouldn't judge man of God. But I thought God said, only God can judge me. You shouldn't say anything, man of God. No, the Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians. Okay, it says he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit must so koto but people tell me all you do is expose all you all you do is expose false teaching all you you don't teach us anything because maybe i have the gift to discern whether a message is from the spirit of god or from another spirit and my bible tells me that there are different ministries but the same lord and different activities but the same lord and god works through all of them so is the, if there is a ministry that's all about discerning whether a message is from the spirit of god or from another spirit you cannot say that there is no discerning ministry of that 
that because the Bible says that God works in it. Oh my God, I'm giving Bible right now. I'm giving Bible right now because they say all you do is, is expose. I expose whether this teaching is from the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. It doesn't matter if you get tired of it or not. I'm not your pastor. I'm not your pastor. God has called me to be a watchman. I do deliverance. I do this. Yes, we do those things. But the core of what the Lord has called me to is deliverance mostly. But there is an expository aspect to my calling. And I shall refute false teaching every day and do reaction videos every single day. Why? Because the Lord is in it. And there are testimonies after testimonies and emails after emails and victims after victims and screenshots after screenshots and videos after videos being sent to me by the videos I expose and donations after donations because the Lord is in what I'm doing despite what anyone says. This is why you have to study your word. That's why you got to study your word. got to study your word because people will tell me man of god we want this i'm not your pastor i do not operate by what people say i do not operate what by what people want because you should be plugged into a church and you have a pastor I'm not a pastor so you're trying to dictate it's like it's like trying to i'm not john the baptist but it's like trying to dictate what John the Baptist is saying. Oh, we're tired of you hearing repentance and telling us to repent. C can, can, you, can you just be full counsel? Can you just, no, no, no. John the Baptist is not your pastor. He's not your pastor. He speaks by the conviction of the Holy Ghost. You, you don't come to him and tell him, do this, do that. You don't do that. Now, we're going to talk about ignorance. We're going to talk about ignorance. Okay. Someone type in the comments and say ignorance. Talk about ignorance. Someone type in the comments and say ignorance. Okay. Ignorance. All right. Ignorance. So when you don't have discernment, you will have a whole lot of ignorance. All right. You will have a whole lot of ignorance. Okay. So when we deal with ignorance, the meaning, the meaning of ignorance, it means to be une uneducated, to be unaware, to, to have a lack of knowledge to be blind spiritually or to have a lack of understanding. Okay. So, um, uneducated, unaware, lack of knowledge, spiritually blind and a lack of understanding. Okay. That's what ignorance is. So ignorance is the very reason why many people perish and continue to be deceived by false prophets and also raped by false prophets. Right. Um, Hosea chapter four, verse six, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Okay. So people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. People receive the demons from the lack of knowledge. Oh, I didn't know he's a false prophet. Why oh, didn't know you can get demons from sexual morality. Oh, I didn't know Christians could have demons. Or oh, I didn't know this. People are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And one way you can be destroyed by the lack of knowledge is when you don't know your identity and your authority in Christ. So when you lack in that area, you will never have a posture of authority or a posture of faith because you lack knowledge that God can use you to, and God could speak you to, and you may have a gift and a calling. So if you lack knowledge in that area, you cripple and disqualify yourself and you ask God to help you. But God said, I've given you the spiritual authority, the trample of the scorpions and the snake. This is why a lot of people have forfeited their destiny because they are ignorant 
to the anointing or calling upon their life or the capacity for them to overthrow the powers that are fighting them. And that is the plan of the enemy to keep people ignorant. It is, it is, it keeps them blind. You understand me? Um, so if you do not have knowledge of the word in context, you will disqualify, you will disqualify yourself from understanding. If you do not have knowledge of the word in context, you will disqualify yourself from understanding. I just don't understand what's going on. What's happening in the body of Christ? Why is there exposure? Why did BBC News do that? The man's dead. Leave him alone. Let him rest. I didn't know that if I talk about TB Joshua, I'm messing up his sleep. I didn't know that you can make souls restless by talking about them. Let them rest. What am I doing to not make them rest? A lot of these people are not wrestling. They're in hell. They're not wrestling. They're in hell. A lot of these people. All right. So if you do not have knowledge of the word in context, you disqualify yourself. You will disqualify yourself from understanding. Why is it all you do is ex expose? So you don't want me to expose the devil. You don't want me to expose false teaching. I know, but there has to be balance. You know, I'm not your pastor. Go get balance from your pastor. You go to Joel Osteen, Osteen's church, there's no balance there. He just talks about seven steps to heaven and seven steps to have a Lamborghini and a better life. But you like Joel Osteen. You see, many, many remain ignorant because they choose not to study or seek out for wisdom. Okay. Many remain ignorant because they choose not to study or seek out wisdom. That's the problem. I don't have man of God. How do you have time on your hands to do all this stuff? Like get a life. Why do you care how much time I have on my life? Yeah, I got time. Even though I'm a I'm a full I'm a full-time father, full-time husband, full-time professional athlete, full-time content creator, and full-time minister, God has blessed me enough to have the capacity to put time into refuting false teaching. And if you're mad about that, be mad about it because I'm not mad how the Lord has blessed me to have time. Don't get mad. Just guys, I, I, I got more time than you. Don't get mad. I got more time than you. Don't be mad that I got more time than you. And I have time management skills where I, I, I set time and dates of how to do this and when to do this. Don't get mad. Okay. So Ephesians chapter four, verse 18. Ephesians chapter four, verse 18. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Ephesians four, 18. They are darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. So there's some people that will remain ignorant and not understand because their heart says, I'm going to love TB Joshua forever. I'm no matter what anyone says, no matter if 50 or 5,000 women come out and have receipts saying that TB Joshua, you are the father. I'm still going to love him. They have made up their minds and they have made up their hearts that no matter lo what Lovi does, no matter what Daniel does, no matter how many of these people get remarried to the 40 billion times and their scandals and adultery and uh, them fornicating all over the place, I'm still going to love them no matter what, because what they did to me, and they gave me an accurate word. That's the problem. Why? That's the, that's the reason why people cannot see the truth because there was a hardness of hearts. That's why people say no matter what BBC news comes out, all the victims are speaking. 
all these Africans, I'm African, so I'm gonna call y'all Africans because we African. All of my African people are over here, not all of us, defending TB Joshua and degrading the woman. Why? Because there's a hardness of heart. There's an idolatry and you do not have compassion to even investigate and to even try to discern and be like, mm, could this be true? But guess what? Because of your hardness of heart, you have been alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in you. They're darkened in their understanding. Just there's a veil and a cloud. See, even with dealing with generational curses, some of you cannot discern what is happening in your life, why you're having certain dreams, why finances are not going, you fast and you pray, but things are not working because there is a darkened understanding about a particular specific thing. This is why you seek God for wisdom and understanding. Yeah, victims don't matter to wolves. Victims don't matter to wolves. You see, ignorance... Ignorance is something internal. Okay? It is something internal and it is a choice. And some people choose to remain ignorant because they have their idols and favorites, which now gives them a hardened heart when it comes to the truth. You know, and some of them are not, it's not that only the fact that they have a hardened heart, it's the fact that they're sleeping with with, with the man of God. He's not, they're not a man of God, but they're sleeping with a false prophet. That's truth. Some of them are sleeping with them. You know what I mean? They, they sleeping with them. So they're not going to say anything because they get in some, some love, some false prophet love. And that's giving an impartation of demons. You understand me? Now, you will not be able to rebuke or discern a false prophet or demonic doctrines if you do not know the word, okay? You will not be able to rebuke or discern a false prophet or demonic doctrines if you do know the word. See, when I expose false teaching, you know, you know what a lot of people say? Nobody's perfect. We all get it wrong. See, that's the problem. You say that. That is the problem. You don't investigate how did they come up with this doctrine? Because it's nowhere in the Bible. Why did they use this verse so out of context to validate this ritual? You don't investigate, you don't try to get answers why they're called a preacher and they are teaching things. See, there are things that are secondary, like we can we can agree to disagree on certain things and it's not a heaven and hell issue. Now there are certain things that they teach out of context that will endorse witchcraft. And if you say, you know, we all get it wrong. No, 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 no. Maybe you get it wrong all the time. Maybe you get it wrong, but I make sure that I teach the truth. Whether people believe in deliverance, prophets and whatnot, those things are secondary things. But when it comes to the unadulterated truth of God, I teach it. Now the Bible says in Titus chapter one, verse nine, he must hold firm to the trustworthy <clears throat> word as taught so that he may, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. So we are called to rebuke those who contradict the word of God. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught. So my question to you is that, are you holding firm to the trustworthy word? Do you study a word? You cannot hold to it if you don't study it. See that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine. <clears throat> So the Bible is telling you that you have to see if your teacher or even yourself or someone you're learning from is giving instruction in sound doctrine. So you're going to have to judge their doctrine and you can't judge their doctrine if you don't know the word. 
and also to rebuke those who contradicted. So the Bible's telling us to rebuke those who contradicted. So you're getting mad at me because every day you see me with another rebuke on teaching. It's funny. I laugh every day. Now there's some people that type comments and, and, and they think I get upset. I'm a grown man, a father, a husband. Do you think comments upset me? It's all, it's all an illusion. It's fake. It, it, these people are, you, you, none of these comments is like real life and people are in your face and it's like, oh my God, my life is horrible. No, it's all fake. There's so many comments. I don't even read them. I will never let these things affect me. I've been doing it for too long. And they don't know they're just boosting the algorithm and bringing more views. They don't, they don't understand that what the Bible says, whatever the enemy plans for evil, I'm turning it for your good. So you come here and you click and you watch and you comment. You're turning it for my good and you don't even know it, right? Second Timothy, we're gonna go to second Timothy chapter four, verse two through four, all right? Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching, itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Okay, so the Bible is telling us to be ready every season to reprove, <clears throat> rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. And that's what I do every day. I rebuke, exhort, reprove with complete patience and teaching on my videos, right? So the Bible is saying for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. They won't even endure the truth, BBC News, they won't endure it. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. That's what's happening right now, right? Then we go to 2 Timothy <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Um, no, seven, uh, no, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for, for correction and for training in righteousness. Okay. So the word of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for rebuke and for correction. All right. Now, what I gave you was just a brief teaching when it comes to when it comes to um, discernment, all right? A brief teaching when it comes to discernment because I do not want you all to be deceived and you all to think that we are supposed to sit in the back burner and never question anything. Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna say is this, unfollow everyone, including myself. If it's all too much for you, unfollow everyone. If you're struggling with your relationship with the Lord, unfollow everyone. I'm going to go grab some water. I will be right back in like 30 seconds. Give me a quick moment. Like I said, um, unfollow everyone, even myself, because I do not want to stand before God on judgment day ever and get a depart from me I never knew. I don't want to go to hell. You know, I want to lead people to Jesus and the truth of the gospel. I want to lead people to have their own discernment so they're not dependent upon my videos or they're not dependent upon another person but they are dependent upon the holy ghost and it is my it is my desire to see the captives set free it is my desire for people to know god for themselves it is my desire for people to know their identity and authority in Christ. 
It is my desire for people to know that God loves them. It is my desire for people to know that God is not done with you yet and you have purpose. It is my desire to let people know that all glory goes to Jesus Christ. It is my desire to teach people to repent and regain the fear of the Lord. I do not come here as someone that wants to be right or be praised, but I stand here as a watchman that has once been deceived, that has once been, been a victim, that has once been so angry at being ignorant. I stand here as someone who loves you and wants to see you thrive because it is an error to defend and idolize someone but never see the fruit in your own life. You're defending and idolizing someone, but you're not serving God and you're not walking in your potential or your calling. It seems that your calling is to just defend, but you walk in nothing. The Bible says that these signs shall follow those who believe. Stop, stop letting them lie to you and telling you that you need impartation in order to be used by God. The Bible says that these signs shall follow those who believe. And the Bible has let us know that the false prophets have gone unto the world and they are wolves in sheep's clothing and they are ravenous wolves and they are raping women behind the scenes they are abusing children they are raping children you call them men and women of god and it's so unbelievable because we call them christians we call them the pope we call them priests we call them father but they are homosexuals and I want to tell you the truth that a lot of these preachers do not like you. You are just content and money for them. You're just on their deliverance reel. You're making the money on social media. They do not care about you. They'll only love you when you support them. But the moment you start asking questions and you begin to investigate, they'll show you their true colors. And I got to a place where I have seen many people be victims because of their desperation. I have seen demonic false prophets within America and Africa deceive people. We're going to pray for the next five to ten minutes. Because the Lord is calling some of you back into the secret place. He's calling you back into the word. He's calling you back into the place of intimacy. Oh, maso que riviosa. You think you know God, but you truly do not know him. You know, you know of him. You think you know his word, but you do not know his word. You have not sought his face as silver. You have not seeked after his presence as hidden treasures. And the Lord is calling you into that place of the unknown where you must seek him with all of your heart in the secret place. And there are revelations that the Lord shall give unto you. And the Lord even says that there are many of you that, are, uh, that have flames within you that need to be rekindled. And the Lord is calling many people back unto him for you have lost your ways. You have lost your first love. You have stepped away from your first love. The Lord says, come unto me and I shall rekindle the flame. I shall give you a zeal and a passion that shall not be put out. Oh, repando refecusque panda, le cunde rivio sotove. Put aside your idols, 
put aside what you see on social media who is accurate who is the next reaction video who is the next deliverance person put it aside and focus on your relationship with jesus for yes we are in the last days and these things have been prophesied so do not be shocked what is happening in these last days for the word says that there is nothing new under the sun what you see now has been happening in the old testament jezebel was leading people into sexual immorality she was leading people into adultery and they called her a prophetess what you're seeing with tb joshua jezebel did it there is nothing new under the sun and the Lord does not want you to dwell in the place of what's always happening within the news, even though I'm reacting, I'm doing things and whatnot, but the Lord wants you to get into the place of the secret place so you gain wisdom and understanding for the word says in Proverbs chapter four, verse three, get wisdom and get understanding. And if you do not get wisdom and get understanding, you will be in a place of deception. You will be in a place of bewitchment. So we call out to you, Lord Jesus. We call out to you, Lord Jesus. We call out to you, Lord Jesus. Ho repando repekus kataiva. Lendo repekurivianda. We're going to pray for the next 10 minutes. Because I believe the Lord wants to do something tonight. And the Lord wants to deliver some of you from your ignorance. The Lord wants to give some of you discernment that, like, that you've never had. And some of you have a gift that is laying dormant. That the Lord wants to make come alive so he can use you. You do not need to come to me but there was someone named Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is one mediator between God and man, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to watch my videos to get the truth. There was a man named Jesus. If you would seek him, you will find him. For the word says, seek and you shall find. The word says that God stands at the door and he knocks. The Lord is knocking at your heart. Father, we say we thank you. We worship you, Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. Father, we pray tonight that you would forgive us, Lord, from any idols we have in our life, any minister that we have put, up, that we have put before the word, that we have put before prayer and fasting, that we have put before, Lord, you, Jesus. We pray, Father God, that the, these idols will be destroyed. We, we, we ask for forgiveness. We repent, oh God. And we return back to our first love that you may speak to us. That you may expose what is happening within, within ourselves, God. That you will give us wisdom and understanding why certain things are not working, why certain things are not moving. And Father, we pray that there would be a healthy restoration of the fear of the Lord back within the church. That there would be discernment. That idolatry would be brought down that the victims would have a voice, that the lowly will have a voice, that the oppressed would have a voice. Father, I pray for those that God that are too scared to speak out Jesus. I pray that you would give them the boldness and the zeal to speak out. I pray, oh God, that there would be exposure that will hit the church of America like never before. I pray, oh God, that there shall be false prophets that will be exposed for the idolatry, 
for their adultery, for their witchcraft, for their fornication, for the deception, oh God. I pray that the voice of the oppressed will be heard in the name of Jesus. For I hear the Lord begin to speak to me. And the Lord says that the funds that they have given unto the people to silence them will not be enough. The Lord says the funds that they have given unto them to silence them will not be enough. The threats of humiliation that they have given unto them to silence them will not be enough. For the Lord said that I will cause people to speak. The Lord said that I will cause people to lift up their voices and you also will begin to see different preachers of false prophets begin to in, begin to fight to defend one another or the reputation of a particular false prophet. The Lord said that there shall be people with absolute no influence that will scream within the wilderness and they shall explore and expose and expose and the Lord said that I shall give a voice unto these people the Lord said I shall give a voice unto these people even though they shall be neglected the Lord said that their voice shall no longer be hindered for I shall make them roar for I shall give them the power I shall give them the boldness and the capacity to scream aloud for in the coming days you shall see that there shall be people that will open up their voice the Lord said that there shall be scandal after scandal in this year there shall be exposure after exposure this year and there shall be the Lord says a gathering of false prophets and you are even seeing it now where they are defending each other and fighting for each other's reputation and the Lord says it's because they are all involved in the same wickedness and they all have the same source of power and this is why there has been a pattern of them coming and talking about and and disregarding the victims like a domino effect there is a reason and a strategy to why they are all doing this collectively from Europe to America to Africa but the Lord said that many of these ministries shall be exposed by the voices that have been threatened by the voices that have been paid off this shall be the year of exposure thus saith the Lord repando and there will be no one that will be able to stop what God is doing and the fear of God will be restored back into the church and the Lord is letting me know even right now that judgment will come harsh that judgment will come heavy, not only in the form of exposure, but there will be crucial judgment where there will be some people that will say, we must pray for this person. We must pray for that person for this is happening. And this must be a tragedy, but this will be the judgment of God that is coming upon those who have been living in wickedness for the longest of times, for the longest of times. Now this is the the word of the Lord and you shall see it come to pass I'm here to tell you today that God will not be mocked God has will not be mocked we are out the, we are at the hour where the Lord is saying right now that I have been patient for people to repent I gave Jezebel a chance to repent but she did not want to repent of her sexual immorality so I casted her unto a sick bed and this shall be the fate 
of those that God has given a chance to repent for the word says that God does not take that God does not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked God does not take pleasure in the perishing of the wicked and he also does not take pleasure in the wickedness that happens behind the scenes where the victims are voiceless but God says that I shall give a voice to the voiceless the Lord said I will give a voice to the voiceless and they will be heard Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus that you would save those who are being sex trafficked those who are in these sex rings those who have been victimized those father god that have been victims of pedophiles let there be a swift exposure oh god let there be a swift exposure oh god you will even see things within the news concerning children very soon that God shall expose things within government God shall expose things that are hidden you will see things in the news where things have been hidden things will be exposed not only in the church but in Hollywood and in government the Lord is simultaneously exposing things and this is why you're hearing Cat Williams speak the secular world is speaking you're seeing certain exposure in different areas because the Lord is fed up and the Lord does not only care about the church but the Lord cares about even the children who are Muslim even the children who are Buddhists even the children who may not know God the Lord loves them even those who rebel against God in their sexual immorality the Lord loves them and the Lord will visit father I pray that your wrath would be released on the unrepentant that have come against the children that have come against the voiceless and the powerless that have come against the meek and the innocent oh god let your judgment and wrath be released oh spirit of grace spirit of truth let it be released spirit of truth let it be released let it be released oh god let it be released oh god for your word says vengeance is mine and i shall repay and i shall contend against those that contend against you oh you are jehovah jireh jehovah nisi jehovah shalom jehovah makadesh jehovah sikanu jehovah elroy you are Jehovah Melfanti, God our deliverer. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are the Rose of Sharon. You are Yeshua Hamashiach Karamanso Repandorifekurivietsi.
it's coming and many eyes are opening 11 days before the new year the Lord begin to speak to me that he will begin to take down kings for he is the one that sets up kings and takes down kings and the Lord spoke to me 11 days before the new year that you will begin to see a display of the wicked the Lord spoke to me and said you would see the display of the wicked in 2024 and you have seen the display full frontal with TB Joshua on BBC News. Now those women have been speaking out for a long time, four years ago, five years ago, but they needed a bigger platform to speak. And the Lord told me that many people global, gl globally will see the display of the wicked, the display of it. I'm telling you, it will be undeniable. You will not be able to hide from exposure. You will turn left and right. You will go north, east, south, west, and you will see it, and you will hear it, even within the Hollywood, everywhere, you will see exposure in the church, in the Hollywood, in government. And we have seen in the year of 2024, how there was an updated list of the Epstein list that was released in the in the new year an updated list and this was the lord showing us that is not only judging and exposing things within the church but exposing the elite and those in government and those also in hollywood and it was also the lord that begin to allow Cat Williams to say what he said about the homosexual conditioning and cross-gender, cross-dressing agenda within Hollywood because these people will, uh, they would not be able to gain the influence that they have without entering into the place of homosexuality or dressing like a woman if you pay attention to a lot of the black people the rock dwayne johnson when you look at kevin hart when you look at martin lawrence when you look at a lot of these comedians they have dressed like women there is a sodomite agenda there is an lgbt agenda that you must bow down to in order to be famous and we saw this with the life of tyler perry do not be deceived with Tyler Perry thinking that he was just a funny person. He became successful. He became successful through the same means as Martin Lawrence. The same means of all these people that dress like women. And God is exposing the sodomite agenda within the music industry, within the, the, the movie industry within the church because they're no different the people in the church are no different than the people in hollywood there's no difference it's the same sex rings it's the same connections what does darkness have to do with light